to a man who flies in the face of Labor's claim that the voice was the only way for Indigenous Australians to get ahead. He's a successful businessman. He's a well-regarded political strategist. He was the national president of the Labor Party until he quit in 2012 to become chairman of Tony Abbott's Indigenous Advisory Council. He's one of the core group of people who led the successful No campaign. And he is, of course, a proud Indigenous Australian himself. I'm speaking here, of course, about Warren Mundine, and I'm delighted to say he joins me now. Well, I tell you what, uh, we know voters, Warren, we've been called dinosaurs, D-heads, racists, a whole lot more. But last night on the project, a new label was added to the list. The biggest dividing line seems to have been education. So if you are in a seat that had high levels of tertiary education, a bachelor or postgrad, then you were, you were at the very top end of the yes vote. And if you had the lowest levels of tertiary education, you were at the, the low end of the yes vote. And that's not to say people who are educated know what they're doing and people who don't have tertiary education don't. Yeah. It's about the style of the, the message, I think. So not just dinosaurs, D-heads, racists, but now we're dumb. <laughs> I mean, what don't they get here? I, I don't think Australians <laughs> could have spoke any more clearly or any more loudly on Saturday night. I just find that hilarious. You know, look, we live in a democracy. We must respect the, 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 the vote and the outcomes of our elections. You know, and over the decades, I've, seen, I've been in the winning camp and I've been in the losing camp. And you must... Uh, respect the Australian people and the choices they have made. It may hurt you, it may, you know, may not like it, but we live in a democracy mm. and we've got to, you know, start getting back to that. You know, I'm sure John Howard, when he lost the 2007 election, was heartbroken at that, but he was dignified. He didn't blame anyone. He just he just come out and conceded and, and, and moved on. And sa same with, uh, uh, you know... Uh, prime ministers before that, going back through the, uh, the entire history of federation, these blokes cannot understand why people voted against them. They are, you know, and yeah, I just find it bizarre. If you're looking at, and it was a massacre, you know, you know, I, I was thinking of calling the homicide squad on on Saturday night, but, you know, because of the the, and I thought I was going to be arrested because it was it was. We just smashed them. The Australian public just smashed them and said, we want nothing to do with this voice. We want nothing to do with this, uh, with the Makarata Commission. We don't, what we want, and it was a very clear message, what we want is the systems that we have now to actually do their job. They're given billions of dollars to, to you know, close mm. the gap. The question's got to be, what have they been doing with that money? Oh, spot on. I mean, I did like it. You kept your cool all the way through the campaign. But when you got some pretty um, ridiculous <laughs> questions from the media on Saturday night, you let them know about it. Watch this. Where's the about getting results? Mm. Getting people reducing suicide and instead of this nonsense that you people carry on with. It's about time. We had a vote tonight that said Australians want to get things done. Please tell us, after this result now, you're going to keep that fire in your belly, uh, about audits, about finding out where the money that leaves Canberra in its billions but never gets to the ground, where that money goes, that you'll go after land councils who don't let Aboriginal people to own land, to build a business, to try and get ahead. This is going to be the next campaign I hope for you Warren please tell me that's true that is true and it all also about the attack on free speech yeah you know, this bill that's been put forward by the the federal government it's it's the big second biggest go that a labor government has uh, uh, attacked free speech in this country and and we've got to fight against that this this truth telling this this uh, this disinformation and misinformation you know 
the real facts are, and we got we've seen this in the polling, was that when people read the the pamphlet that was put out by the AEC the vote for the Yes mm. campaign went down. And that went down because they started to see the dangers. They started to see this thing which was but was a magic wand. No one was prepared to tell them how, say, come out and give us the details and tell us how it was going to fix everything. Uh, they just kept on saying, oh, no, no, uh, you know, child molestation, uh, just... It'll be fixed by the, by the voice. This, uh, you know, crime in Aboriginal communities will be fixed by the voice. Uh, unemployment will be fixed by the voice, and none of it, none of it. You know, how how do you uh, how do you actually get an advisory? committee and, and uh, that can be, uh, its advice can be rejected, this is their words, not mine, can be rejected mm. by the government uh, and, and that's what we're doing now and now they want to put it in the constitution. Look, we had the vote, we need to move on, we need to bring people back together and focus on the real issues and this is what I'm, I'm going to be out there doing every day, is get back to the real issues about, you know, nine-year-old kids who have been committing suicide in, in, in Aboriginal communities. You know, when I was nine years old, all I wanted to do was kick a footy around with my brothers and my mates, you know, and, and looking forward to a good life. You know, they're looking mm. at their future and they can't see nothing. And so they commit suicide. For God's sake, it's about time the, the media woke up and started asking the real questions to, of governments at state, territory and federal level mm. to do their job. I want to read out a letter that I know you've only got in the last uh, couple of hours. It's, it's an email. Um, really moving. And this is from a bloke, and I'll, I'll read out what he said. He says, I, I've never done anything political in my life, but I was so disgusted by the guilt politics that have infected this country that I stood for 11 hours out the front of my polling booth alone in Victoria. And when I finally got home and took off my shoes and sat down, it was with a sense of shame that my one day must pale into insignificance to what you and just enterprise and your families must have had to endure over this period. My children, he says, have never seen me cry, but I was moved to tears when I saw your outburst at the media because I feel the same way too. I've really felt more humbled than now and am proud to have done my tiny part in this small victory for common sense and logic. Now, I've left the bloke's name out because... Uh, he, he took on all the yes people at his polling booth. He was the only no person <laughs> handing out. I might add that polling booth went 65%, I think, uh, the way of no. So he's a pretty powerful yeah. uh, individual. <laughs> but, I mean, I read that and had tears in my eyes too, Warren. Uh, look, the Australian people, you know, I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud uh, of people like him. You know, I went around the polling booths and the pre-polling uh, in in Western Australia, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland, and and we we, we were struggling, and uh, we had didn't have the money and it, things like that, and we had. Some booths we couldn't even man, and yet those booths still got a a no vote, and and he, I, I'm just so proud of him. He he is an amazing amazing human being, and 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 I met heaps of them out there, who were who were being abused on the polling booths, being attacked. I, you know, I, I've always been polite and, and to volunteers, no matter what political party they're in, no matter what, because d democracy works when people come out and, and volunteer and, and help help the process, help the candidates and all that. And so I always put my hand out to shake their hand. And, and for the first time in my life, and I've been doing this for 30 years, uh, people refused to shake my hand. Uh, they gave me dirty looks. Wow. You know, but I, 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 I got I to gotta say that not all people were like that. There were some beautiful people who come up and gave me a cuddle from the Yes campaign, and I and, and I even got photos with them. Uh, it is, uh, you know, this this minority of people who, who are whinging now because they mm. can't accept the democratic process. I'll keep it up. You've got uh, you've got your campaign mojo back now. We'll see what happens next. Free speech is uh, <laughs> Warren Monday is coming out to protect you and more. Thank you for your time, mate. Well done. A magnificent campaign from you too.